Hey everyone, it's great to see you. It's been a great month. You might say I'm a super fan of what we've been talking about this month. And we've been talking about kindness. Kindness is showing others they are valuable by how you treat them. We've talked about how Jesus has been so kind to us. He is our biggest fan. He believes the best about us and he is kinder than he had to be. Because Jesus is so kind to us, we can be kind to others. We've talked about how important it is for us to show kindness and to treat others the way that Jesus treats us. After all, everyone is valuable. Everyone is made in the image of God. We can show people how valuable they are when we act like super fans, when we treat them with kindness, respect, and love. We can show kindness to people who are a lot like us and to people who aren't like us too. We'll get into that a little bit later in our story. But for now, I want to see what kind of super fan you are with the super fun trivia game. It's called the Super Fan Quiz. This will be fun because the questions are all about sports. I'm talking fun facts, famous athletes, the works. Let's broaden our knowledge of sports today. Who wants to play? All right, great stuff. All right, friends, let's begin. Question one. How many dimples do you think are in a golf ball? Dimples are these little parts of the ball. How many do you think? Maybe 100, 200, or maybe you think there's a thousand. Guys, the answer is golf balls have around 336 dimples. That's the average, but there's no limit to the number of dimples. They could be anywhere between 300 and 500. Their purpose is to make the golf ball travel further in the air. <laughs> Question two, which sport do you think is the oldest? Do you think it's tennis, rugby, boxing, or wrestling? The answer is wrestling. The first sport as we know it today was most likely wrestling, and it originated in Greece in 776 BC. Question three, how long do you think the grass is at Wimbledon? The answer is eight millimeters long. The grass at Wimbledon used to be around 50 millimeters long until an English player was bitten by a snake in 1949. Yikes. Question four. In which year did Eswatini first participate at the Olympic Games? Hmm. This one is a bit of a tough one, right? The answer is 1972. Two competitors, both male, took part in four events in two sports. Question number five. Okay guys, the next question I am sure you are going to get right. Which sport has the most supporters and fans? Let me give you a clue just in case you are not sure about your answer. <laughs> an estimated number of 3.5 billion fans. And cricket comes in, in at number two with 2.5 billion supporters. Do you know how much kindness can be shown through good sportsmanship in a sport? Come on, let's go to the field. 
There's an amazing story that happened last year in a sport that may be unfamiliar to many of us called lacrosse. It's a bit like hockey, but with a stick, with a net that actually picks up the ball. Lacrosse was a sport invented in Northern America by the indigenous people of the Eastern Woodlands and by various other indigenous people of North America. The team that plays representing this area is called the Iroquois National Men's Lacrosse Team. Today, the sport has grown so much and has become extremely popular. There are even world games for lacrosse. But guess what? The Iroquois National Team was originally banned from competing in the games because they weren't recognized as a sovereign nation. But lots of people within the sport felt that that was wrong. So eventually, the organizers changed their decision and allowed the Iroquois National Men's Lacrosse Team to compete. But by this time, all the spots had been filled. So the National Lacrosse Team of Ireland did an incredible they withdrew from the game so that the Iroquois men's team could play and honor them for inventing the sport. Isn't that incredible? That was a true act of kindness and sportsmanship in the world of lacrosse. And speaking of kindness, Jesus is kind to everyone. So it's really important to God that we also choose to be kind and not just to the people who are friends or the people who we like, or the people we find it easy to be kind to. Jesus wants us to show kindness to everyone. Let's take a look together at an example of how Jesus showed kindness in the story of Jesus talking to a lady at a well. Jesus was traveling from Judea back to Galilee and decided to go through the region of Samaria where the Samaritan people lived. In Jesus' day, Jewish people and Samaritans were related to each other, but they were not friends. They were enemies. There was a history of feuds and grudges between the Jewish people and Samaritans, and they did not talk to each other. Samaritans didn't like hanging out with Jewish people, and Jewish people didn't like hanging out with Samaritans. So much so that Jewish people actually did not allow Samaritans to worship with them or have anything to do with them. And even went out of their way to avoid traveling through Samaria. But Jesus was not like anyone else. Jesus loved everyone. At noon, Jesus and his disciples arrived at a well on the edge of Samaria. Jesus sat by the well to rest while his disciples went into town to buy food because Jesus was hungry. While he was sitting down, a Samaritan woman came to draw some water. Jesus asked her for a drink of water. She was shocked. She couldn't believe that Jesus was speaking to her. She said, you are a Jew and I'm a Samaritan. How can you ask me for a drink? You see, she knew that Jewish people in that time refused to use the same cups and bowls that Samaritans used. By speaking to the woman and asking her for something, Jesus was reaching out to this woman to show that she was valuable to him. And then he goes one step further. He offers to give her something better than water, living water, which is Holy Spirit. Jesus replied, if you knew what God gives and who I am, you would be asking for living water. <laughs> wow, guys, do you see how kind and caring Jesus was? Jesus didn't let what other people said or pass grudges between their people get in the way of showing love to this very special woman. She was important in his eyes. Let's read a little further. You don't have anything to draw water from this deep well. Where would you get living water, the woman asked. Jesus answered, those who drink ordinary water will get thirsty again, but I am talking about the living water of eternal life. Give me that water so I will never be thirsty again, the woman demanded. 
go and call your husband, Jesus told her, and come back. I don't have a husband, she protested. You're right, Jesus told her. You have been married to five men, and the man you live with now isn't your own husband. Jesus knew that this woman had made bad choices and was living in sin, but he was loving and kind to her anyway. The woman was shocked. Jesus knew so much about her and exclaimed, you are a prophet. And then something amazing happens. Jesus had not told anyone just yet that he was the Messiah who had come to save everyone. He was waiting for the right time to tell people. He hadn't even told his disciples. But guess what? Jesus chose the Samaritan woman at the well to be the first person that he told that he was God's savior, the Messiah. At that point, the disciples returned and the woman left her water and jar and went back into town to tell everyone, come and meet the man who told me everything I have ever done. Could he be the Messiah? This woman who had been living in sin and a Samaritan started sharing the gospel and good news with others straight away. And because of her and Jesus, many Samaritans came to know Jesus over the next two days. The Samaritans told the woman, we believe because we too have heard him and we know that he really is the savior of the world. Let's go inside. It's important for us to show kindness to other people because everyone is important to God. Everyone is valuable to Him. That's true about people who are similar to you, and it's also true about people who are very different from you. It's true about people that you enjoy and consider your friends. And it's true about people that you don't. We need to remember this. Be kind to everyone. We can look at the way Jesus lived and see how he showed kindness to everyone. He hung out with people who others had forgotten, people who were sick and people who had done wrong things in the past. And when Jesus died on the cross, he did it for everyone. We should show kindness to every person we meet, just like he did. You can show how much you love God by the way you treat others. Don't know where to start? Okay, try doing this. First, ask people questions to help you understand them. Second, Show them that they matter to you. Third, think about what's best for them, not just what's best for you. Everyone who needs you to show them God's love is your neighbor. Whether they look like you, act like you, or believe like you. Let's pray and ask God to help us show that kind of kindness. God, thank you for showing us what kindness looks like through your son, Jesus. Thank you for this story that reminds us to be kind to everyone. Please help us see everyone we meet as a neighbor. Help us show them that they're valuable by the way we treat them. We love you and we pray these things in Jesus' name, amen. Well, that's all we have time for today. I had a great time with you. Thank you so much for joining me. We learned so much about kindness this month. I would like to encourage you today. You can be the I in the word kindness. Join us next week for a new series. Goodbye.